gosh, I haven't filmed in a while. Excuse me. <laughs> Hello everyone, happy new year and welcome to, of course, the first reading vlog of 2022, which is insane, but the first book is done, <sighs> the first book is done, and it is a five-star read, oh my gosh, I still cannot, I don't know how to talk about this book, no words seem enough right now, it's been a few days actually since I finished it, this is Rilke's book of hours, by the way, it is a collection of poems about just everything love loss grief fear belief um rilke has a way with words in which you can both it's very fascinating because you can both question your beliefs but also begin to trust yourself and be kinder to yourself and your fears and your inner shame almost reading this reminded me a lot of the feeling that I get when I listen to Chopin's music, who's one of my favorite composers, um, all of his pieces speak to my soul. And it is very interesting when you read about his creations because they symbolize a little bit of the path you walk in when you are sleeping or dreaming or alone with your thoughts and with silence and you have no one else and nothing else around you to interrupt you or distract you from your train of thoughts and feelings and it's fascinating because that's exactly the same sort of cloudiness that this book gave me where I felt completely lost because at a certain point he mentioned a few things that really hit you <laughs> they really hit you and they feel personal even though I don't know it's just this ability that Rilke has of understanding a human soul um, and the way he puts that into words it's beautiful and so poetic obviously um, I don't even know how to express my feelings about this book it was incredible and I'm so glad I read it I I will read a few out loud not not a lot because I, I will get emotional again but just for you to see the beauty of his words the first one says I know that nothing has ever been real without my beholding it all becoming has needed me. My looking ripens things, and they come toward me to meet and to be met. And then, I love the dark hours of my being. My mind deepens into them. There I can find, as in old letters, the days of my life already lived and held like a legend and understood. Then the knowing comes. I can open to another life that's wide and timeless. So I am sometimes like a tree and making real the dream of the one it's living roots. Embrace, a dream once lost among sorrows and songs. <sighs> My heart, <laughs> My heart, I swear, I, I, don't, I don't know, I don't even know how to explain it. I feel like reading poetry is always fascinating because each different person will have a very different experience and obviously this collection will not speak to everyone um, I feel like poetry always comes I mean every writing does of course but poetry in specific they it feels like such a melody a very personal melody that the writer composes for us in a way and just like with music every person will have a different experience with it so I would recommend you to at least give it a try. It does sometimes have a very religious tone to it, but I also like the idea that God can be in all things. I'm not a religious person, but I am a spiritual one. And this book spoke to me because of that, because he sees greatness in all things. He sees beauty and he sees danger in a way, which is such an interesting relationship to have with the world, you know, so, I don't know, it's just, I loved it so much and I know a few of the other girls from the Dark Academics will be reading this one as well because we are budget reading it, so I cannot wait to hear all of their thoughts and discuss this with them because I feel like words are not enough, this is a very personal experience, you know, and to me it just felt the way I feel with Chopin's composition specifically. So I know that's a very terrible explanation <laughs> because it is quite subjective and hard to explain, but 
this really spoke to me and I wasn't necessarily expecting that I have to say but it did and it, it was wonderful so that's the first the first read of the year and it's off to a great start <laughs> I slept with my Snow White sweater today because it's so comfy and cute. Um, good morning everyone. Speaking of great books, I'm currently trying to decide which ones I want to include for my favorites of 2021 video and it's very hard. <laughs> it's hard for good reasons though because I've had a great reading year. I've read so many amazing books um, that right now for my favorites, I'm just trying to go by instinct, you know? The ones that stayed with me, the ones that I'm looking at and immediately grab my attention and make me happy, those are the ones that I'm gonna pick, but I feel like I'm going to have so many honorable mentions <laughs> because it's just so many good books, oh my gosh. And you know what's making this difficult as well is the fact that I've read so many Tolkien books. <laughs> so like, where do I put these? Do I have a spot for just talking in general? I could do that. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I, I feel like I have like four of his books on my favorites of the year. Um, no, it's so hard. I don't know. But anyway, you will have seen that video already. So I'm just, this is past Mary because she cannot decide anything. <laughs> As you can see, I recently decided to reorganize my entire bookshelves, my entire book collection and it took me the entire day <laughs> because it was a very thorough cleaning session and reorganizing everything so it really took me a lot of hours. I usually like to do this, I would say, at least once per year, just take all of my books out and clean every single thing that's on my shelves and just change things a little bit. Um, a few of you noticed actually on my previous videos which I find so sweet because it means that you are paying close attention and a few of you asked if I was going to upload my bookshelf reorganization video soon which honestly that was my plan however <laughs> I did start filming it but then I became so focused on my task ahead and I noticed that it was going to take me so long that honestly I just forgot to film I don't have a lot of footage at least not enough to make it a full video because once I started noticing how long this would take me and it was really the only time that I could do this big reorganization so once I realized that I thought I might as well just focus on it and what I decided to do is just start planning my bookshelf tour and then on that video I can explain to you how I decided to organize my shelves this time, how the process was. I'll show you basically everything which I thought it could be a bit repetitive to upload after a reorganization video so I will just combine them into one big video about my bookshelf tour which yes I'm guessing it will be a very long video. <laughs> 
I did ask for some feedback both on YouTube and on Patreon as well as to how you would prefer a bookshelf tour to be because you get tons of different formats, right? You get those where you watch every single book on the shelves, you get a few that are more focused on just a bookshelf overview and the opinions diverge, honestly. I think it really depends on your preference. So I'm gonna try and make a video that's a combination of both of them. So I will show you every single one of my shelves, but maybe Maybe just not talk about every single book that's on them just you know some of my priorities maybe for this year I can also talk about some of my favorites as well I'm gonna try and make it a more dynamic but also cozy video hence why I think it will be very long but hopefully you will enjoy it I did already start working on it actually so I'm really hoping to bring you that video soon ish either this month or next one I would say so January or February, that's my plan, just so we can have a bookshelf tour at the start of the year and then hopefully I can start doing those maybe yearly? We'll see, as my book collection changes as well. I think it is a fun way to document my book collection, I guess, and just talk to you about all of these. And yes, I think it will be very fun. It's a video that I have been meaning to film ever since I started my channel, but now that I'm truly happy with how my bookshelves look, I think it is finally time. <laughs> since, you know, they recently went through a big change. So that's something that I'm definitely planning to upload soon, as soon as possible. But yes, it has been a while since I last talked to you, actually. Life has been a little busy and getting back to a routine after Christmas has not been easy. <laughs> it is getting easier right now, but just getting back to a full schedule after taking a little break, it takes time, you know, of course, I'm sure you get that. But everything's settling down again, fortunately, and I am now back at work and classes and everything just trying to balance all of my schedule and of course also making time to create videos which is something that I love doing um, there hasn't been much reading lately but I am still currently reading The Lies of Locke Lamore and I'm so excited because I'm still loving this I do agree with the few reviews that I've seen about this book which complain a little bit about the pacing during the first 50 to 100 pages or so and yes, I would say they are slow-ish, but I also think they are a build-up for something much bigger to come, you know? Right now we are getting to know the characters and all of their tricks, their relationship, and I'm just loving it because I love books where you get to spend time with the main characters and really get to know them. But yes, I do get that negative review, I guess, of the pacing being a little too slow, but I think it will be worth it. I think you just need to be a little patient. So I don't know, I'm really loving the setting. I love the characters so far. They are quite quirky and fun and very, I don't know, they have this very morally gray area that I'm loving and I think it will be very interesting to explore um, for the rest of the book and the series, of course, which, by the way, <laughs> I just got, I just recently got a Christmas gift that I need to show you. So my friend Sarah from the channel Sarah the Dreamer knew how much I was loving this book. So she went ahead and bought me the sequel and I'm so excited. This is amazing. I will read this one as soon as possible. I definitely want to continue reading the series, so I will definitely read this one very, very soon. Although I do have some other priorities first, which I will talk about in a bit. But right after those, I will definitely read this one and the third book as well, because I feel like this is going to be such an epic journey and I'm so excited. I recently also got this gorgeous, perfect Christmas gift from Lucy, but I will show you that on my bookshelf tour actually because I think it's very fitting for me to show you that during the bookshelf tour so you'll see but <laughs> it's perfect and I love it so much so my friends are the best as you can see <laughs> but yes priority reads okay so we have of course this one and I will be finishing this one very soon hopefully this week because I'm also listening to the audiobook while I go to work so that's nice but then before I read the sequel, I also need to prioritize mainly this one, which is Does Were Their Faces by Silvina Ocampo. This is our current Dark Academics pick. It has been for a while now and I still need to read this. I wasn't able to get a copy of it during the first month. I think it was only, was it November, I think, that I got this one? I can't remember exactly, but because we were postponing the live show, I decided to postpone my reading of it as well because I like to 
keep my thoughts fairly fresh before the live show so because we are discussing it very soon I am hoping to read it this week as well I think it was both Emma and Lucy who finished this one already and weren't the biggest fans but you know, I will still read it, of course, but it will also be a very cozy live show as well. We will be doing a bit of a QA and a and just chatting with you all, which is always lovely. So I'm looking forward to it as well. But then I also have another big priority, which is this one. <laughs> okay, let me sit down. Okay, <laughs> it is The Nature of Middle-earth by J.R. Tolkien, of course, because this is our next and final pick for the Fellowship of the Read-Along and I need to get to it. I'm not sure exactly when our live show will be, but it should be soon-ish as well. And we'll also have a very cozy chat and Q&A because this is the final book after all so we're going to have a very relaxing live show hopefully but you know i would still love to read this book and discuss a few details i i think i said this previously but this is not exactly a book that provides you with a lot of discussion topics i don't think because these are just you know a few curiosities about the world and the characters it doesn't really have a story i don't think so it's really more out of love for this world and i think it will be lovely so these are the next two books that i will be reading after the lives of Wakamora and then I can start on the sequel. <laughs> That's the plan, at least for now, so we'll see how that goes, but I think it should be fine. <laughs> I just got another beautiful Christmas gift from my friend Sarah from Sarah's Perusals and it is this stunning book. This is The Girl Who Drank the Moon by Kelly Barnhill, I think. Um, this is a middle grade novel. I've heard incredible things about this one. I believe it deals with adoption, if I'm not mistaken, but I've seen so many of my booktube friends loving this book, so I am very excited to read it. Plus, look at this cover. It has a tiny little dragon here. How cute is it? Oh my gosh. I love it. It's so pretty, and I think I'm going to love this one. Um, so thank you so much, Sarah. But the other reason I wanted to tell you this is because <laughs> we sent each other the exact same book. What are the odds? <laughs> I sent her this one for her birthday and she sent me this one for Christmas. We just, you know, went to each other's wish lists and picked a book, obviously. What are the odds of us picking the exact same book? <laughs> We didn't even know about it, um, but Sarah did get this one before me and I was talking to her about this and saying how hilarious and amazing this is and she was saying that she had to control herself when she got the book because she already knew I was also going to get it and now we are planning to buddy read this one, which is lovely. I think it is mandatory, you know, 
because what were the chances really? I honestly think it's incredible the fact that this happened so of course now we need to bother with this one I don't know when it will happen or anything but I feel like now we must do that <laughs> I've since then finished reading Those Were Their Faces by Silvina Ocampo and I loved her writing style. I thought it was so beautiful and all the metaphors she's able to create when it comes to reflecting about the loss of someone and that grief about longing for someone who's not there anymore. I thought that was beautiful and I really enjoyed a few of the stories. My favorite one was this one called Autobiography of Irene. I thought it was just very dreamy and surreal and dark, but it also felt extremely personal. I felt like she was able to create a connection between our physical worlds, but also the one that transcends us and the ones we create in our mind, I guess. So I really enjoyed her writing style. The problem for me, and I feel like this is a very common problem to have, at least when it comes to my reading taste with short story collections, it is I start feeling engaged and the moment it happens, the story ends, which is so sad. <laughs> and I do wish that a few of these stories would have been full novels because then I could have spent more time in each one of them. The setting was incredible. I loved how gothic and grotesque it was, so I needed more of it because it's like I said, the soon, the minute I became more interested, more invested in the story, it just ended and I wanted more of it so if you do have any recommendations for Ocampo's longer novels then please let me know because actually I would love to read more by this author. I guess it's not the book's fault really, it is just my taste I guess when it comes to short story collections. They are always too short <laughs> for me but it was still good. I still rated it a three star I believe and I still enjoyed reading it so at least there's that. But yes, I this last week well, last weekend actually, was filled with live shows. I had one on Friday with Milena and Sarah and it was amazing. Also, Lucy ended up showing up at the end, which was so much fun. But in case you don't know, Sarah, Milena and I are hosting the Bronte Long, which actually the first official month for it is February, so it is almost here and for that we will be reading all the Bronte novels together. We have a Discord group and everything that I can link for you in case you'd like to join but yes i'm so excited for it and so we decided before starting with our official book discussions live shows we decided to do some reading sprints and just hang out with all of you for a bit which is something that we are hoping to do again probably um either on my channel or in one of theirs of course but it was so much fun i loved being with them it was actually my first time talking to both of them so it was so lovely and it was i would say a very productive live show because we ended up talking about our favorite books and supposedly each one of us now has to read one of the other's favorites which is so much fun and that of course means that I will be having a vlog in which I will be reading one of Sarah's favorites and one of Melena's favorites and I cannot wait for that it will probably take me a while <laughs> before I film that video but I am truly so excited and I just they're so wonderful they're such wonderful people and I'm very excited to be hosting this read along with them it will be so much fun then on Saturday we had our dark academics live show which was about the book but also and mainly I would say it was a big catch-up we answered a few questions and just talked about anything really and it was so nice to see all the girls again it had been a long time since since our last live show, which was, I believe, in September. Um, so it had been a long time since we all were together and live with you, so it was lovely again, of course. It felt so nice to just catch up with all of them and all of you, of course, so if you did join us, thank you so much. Meanwhile, we do already have a new book, which will last for February and March, and that is Sleepwalking by Meg Wolitzer, I think. That was Lucy's pick, and I'm really excited about that one, because it is supposed to be dark academia-ish, which <laughs> is something that in theory I love, I adore everything about Dark Academia and especially when it comes to movies, I have a lot of favorites, but I still need to find a good Dark Academia book. I did somewhat enjoy a few of them, but never truly loved 
any so i'm hoping that maybe sleepwalking will do the trick um so of course if you'd like to join us just you know you can follow us on twitter on instagram on discord i always leave the links to all my book clubs in the description in case you'd like to join um so yes that's our next pick for the dark academics and then for the tea leaves book club which i had the live show with the girls as well on sunday so it was very <laughs> a very busy weekend when it comes to live shows but it was lovely because i got to catch up with so many of my dear friends and it is always the best time but yes for the tea leaves on sunday we discussed my berlin friend by elena ferrante and our next book will be we are not free which again i just i cannot wait to read it i'm really looking forward to reading that one because i think it will give us a perspective we don't always see when it comes to war stories because it follows japanese americans teenagers i believe which again i feel like it is a point of view we don't always get in books so really looking forward for that one we also ranked all the books we read for the book club which was hilarious because <laughs> only sophia had real favorites from that list. Hilary, Sarah and I were just, <laughs> you know, the way we felt about the books we read for the book club this year was either we didn't like them or they were just okay. So I guess my favorite was My Brilliant Friend because I really did enjoy that one. But other than that, I don't know, we didn't have a lot of successful picks this year, so hopefully this year it will be better. But of course, it is always amazing to catch up with the girls anyway. So that was my weekend. I am so grateful I got to talk with so many amazing people. And currently I'm here to close this vlog because I'm about to start filming another one. I'm also in the middle of two bigger videos, which will come eventually, hopefully next month or so. Um, one of them being the bookshelf tour, of course, which I already talked about. But I'm also filming another one, which is also highly requested from all of you, which is a productive week in my life. So I will be talking about my job, my studies, and hopefully you will enjoy it. But I do want to dedicate some more time to filming and editing both of those videos. So they should be coming fairly soon, I would say. But until then, of course, I will also try to do more reading vlogs because I miss filming them so much. I feel like I haven't vlogged as much as I would like to. I cannot guarantee weekly vlogs every single week, but we'll see how that goes. Um, I'm just gonna try and in general film more vlogs because they're also a way for me to catch up with all of you, of course. Usually for my Patreon, I also film an exclusive video every single month, just giving a big catch up, life updates or reading plans, things like that. That, but since this is the first month of the year, I wanted to do that here and just ask all of you how you've been, how you are. I truly hope this year is starting out well for all of you and that you're reading some great books or doing anything else that you love, of course. Because for me, I feel like I've been doing a multitude of things. So there hasn't been a lot of reading actually because I've been doing many different things. Of course, one of them being working. But I did also watch a couple of movies and TV shows as well. And I've also actually started drawing again, um, which <laughs> feels so weird to say because it has been a while since I've done that. But I am slowly practicing a few shapes. I'm trying to draw some natural elements, so I started with mushrooms. <laughs> They're not very realistic at all, it is just some cute-ish doodles, I guess, but it makes me so happy to just try and get back to that habit again. And slowly I will try to implement these new hobbies in my life, because there's just so much that I want to try out, you know? And hopefully that's also something that I will talk about more in my videos, of course, and just tell you how everything's going. <laughs> so yes, I'm just i'm hoping you're all doing very well but remember that if you're not it's okay as well just be kind to yourself take some time explore new hobbies i feel like that helps me a lot when i'm feeling very overwhelmed by you know life and just things in general just try out new things for me last year it was video games that proved to be a big help for me and now i <laughs> i find myself watching four hour long videos on youtube which are basically a study on video games last night i actually watched one about uncharted 4 which was so interesting so now i'm a bit of a video game nerd and i love it <laughs> 
it's definitely a new hobby that really helped me throughout the more difficult times so I would also suggest you to just explore new things maybe something that you've never done before or something that you used to do as a kid and never picked up again which is my case with drawing <laughs> so you know try to rediscover yourself your passions your hobbies your dreams even and take some time to take a step back be kind to yourself and just breathe let me know how you are if there's anything you'd like to share feel free to do so in the comments of course but for now i'm gonna leave you <laughs> and hopefully start filming a new vlog right away because i've been so excited and motivated to create new content so that's what i'm about to do but as always i am sending you all the love the biggest hug and i will see you again very soon on my next video bye everyone <laughs>